What's going on, good, beautiful people out there in YouTube in land? It is I, the bad wolf, the mad wolf, the man in black. You know what it is. All right, so uh, do me a favor, hit that bell, like, subscribe. Well, you guys already know what, you know, you guys got this, all right? Um, so check it out. So this clip, though, I did make a short on it, and we won't, this won't be a particularly long video, but it's a very powerful one for those people who do right to travel. Now, if this is your first time here, obviously, welcome to the uh, to the club. Welcome to the desert of the real, as they say in the Matrix. Um, we are all about truth, facts, and, um, well, your rights, freedoms, and liberties, okay? Now, there's a lot of things going on, and most of this is about jurisdiction. So this is not for your average U.S. citizen who enjoys the um, benefit privilege of driving. This is for those people who enjoy or want to learn more about right to travel. Now, what is right to travel? Right to travel is the fact that the states, along with the government, have, even though the government's on our side, uh, a monopoly, mostly with the states, in driving. Now, most of you guys don't know this, but driving, in fact, is a privilege, but it's also a thing that's licensed by the state. Now, the Supreme Court, which is the ruling court uh, of ruling law, constitutional law, Supreme Court, they, they can decide what's actually law because each state gave up a piece of its sovereignty to be in the union. And so the Supreme Court makes the final ruling on things. Now, the states can do a lot of whatever they want to do if you agree, which is also known as consent of the governed, to be in their jurisdiction to be, in fact, the all-capitalized name, which is a entity, a legal person that they created with the same name as you, okay? That's alter ego. So in doing right to travel, for those of us who know the superior law, which is the Constitution and the Supreme Court's rulings, they've ruled that when done properly, you can operate your vehicle, which is known as your personal or private conveyance for leisure. See, in Black Law's Dictionary, okay, I recommend the 11th edition, but all of them are good. It states that driving is for commercial purposes. Well, if you're just going from your home to your job and you're not doing things like Uber, DoorDash, CDL, whatever else, or police officer, those are all jobs where you're make, using the roads to generate income. Now, in the police's case, which I've done this process for many police officers over the years, you cannot do this with your police cruiser and you're generating income for the, well, for the state or the county or whatever you're affiliated with. But with your private conveyance at home, yes, you too can do right to travel. So the Supreme Court has already ruled that we have the right and liberty to operate our personal and private conveyances for pleasure on the public roadways. So the roadways, just because they're there, doesn't mean that everybody on there is governed. Now, before people get all jazzy, this what we're talking about here is not about you being above the law. This is not about you being able to do whatever the hell you want to do. You still have to abide by the rules of the road and um, public safety, all that stuff still applies. But what it does mean is for those people who know how to do this the correct way, and if you want to learn to do it the correct way, Watch my other videos on my YouTube channel, including my lives on Right to Travel. You can also get the Supreme Court cases that back up Right to Travel. Um, you can also go to your state's legislative website and look up um, foreign registered vehicles or uh, non-resident registration. Okay, look up their re resident codes. In my particular state, it's 341.40. Very familiar. As well, you need to be with this information as well if you're going to do this. Now, this doesn't mean that you're not supposed to still have insurance. It doesn't mean that you're still not, like I said, abiding by the road. A police officer can still pull you over if you're doing something illegal or you look like you're drunk driving or whatever else. That's public safety. But as a private person, which is the difference between being a U.S. citizen who's a public person, okay? Now, you're not getting all the information here because it's in the other videos. This specific one is about this particular video clip which was sent to me by Chip Smith. So please support him on his channel on YouTube. And let's take a look at the video. Now understand that when many people, and though I've only been bothered probably three times in like 10, 11, 12 years, whatever it's been now, 
the police officer who did pull me over did have some ability to do that because we didn't have all the information on how to properly do right to travel. Well, now we do. And what's interesting is that this information has rippled all the way up to Congress where they actually were addressing it. Now, it's just my belief, and as always, everything here is education and entertainment. Please vet your own information provided to you from your favorite non belligerent non-combatant treaty with the United States and the state of um, Bad Wolf, that we now know, like I said, we now know how to how to do right to travel the proper way. So please watch all the other videos in all of their entirety before just going out there and doing something. Because if you don't do it properly, they do have the right to pull you over. You know, and such things would be you haven't closed your account properly, you haven't updated information, you didn't create a private trust, and you, you know, don't have a travel binder with all of your information. So on the side of the road, you can educate them. Because unfortunately, police officers are not taught this information. I've I've got friends and family who are cops. I've had cops in my seminars. I've had people in many other agencies in the state. And they're like, how do you know this information? Because I read the books and laws that they're all supposed to do, but I look for specific things, okay, to represent my freedom because I operate under the Constitution as a patriot, okay, a real American, all right? Then there's different jurisdictions. Police officers are operating under the state or county's jurisdiction. Even the county is operating under the state, okay, under the U.S. corporation. Well, that's fine, but there's also the Constitution for the United States of America, that parchment I just showed you, them and the Supreme Court have the ruling laws, your rights, okay? When you operate under the states, it's a different set of rules and privileges and licenses and statutes that you must abide by. And once again, this does not mean you can just ignore public safety and all the rules and just, woo, it's a free-for-all. We can do whatever we want to do. Not at all. It's not at all what I preach. It's you're able to use your vehicle privately in a, in a pri un, under the Constitution, supported by the Supreme Court rulings. So now, without further ado, let's take a look at the video clip where they are talking about this. And it's just a blurb, so it's not the full article. But nobody talks about right to travel without it actually being what it is, because most people have never even heard about that. Uh, unless you're one of my great viewers who are who already have supported me over all these years and um we've taken this matter to the courts and when done properly we've won across the board when not done properly yeah they're going to ticket you and whatever else so be well informed before doing anything so once again this video uh shout out goes out to chip smith for sending me this information and uh, as well i appreciate all other people who send me uh, interesting articles and things um, on cases of freedoms, your own personal stories and whatnot. So without further ado, let me um, share a screen and then we'll jump right back. Okay, this is going to be on right to travel is a constitutional right. Okay, so this goes out to all the viewers. Let's go. Look, I, I, my view about the right to travel is the same uh, as in his separate opinion. He says it is not a different, particularly difficult question. The right to travel is a constitutional right. There you go. Now, when he says the justice, he's talking about Supreme Court. And opinion, meaning his thoughts, but also in opinion, means court case. Okay. That means in, see, they don't call them court cases in the Supreme Court. They're called opinions, which means that they have full lawful, which is different than legal, which is on the, usually, usually means only on the state level, inside the corporation known as the United States. But on the Supreme Court level, their opinions, meaning they have already ruled that right to travel is constitutional. It's your right. See, what we didn't know, and here, let me play this before, and I'll, I'll finish my statement. One more time. Look, I, I about the uh, right to travel is the same as the in the separate opinion. That's a really difficult question. Travel is a constitutional right. There you go. There you have it. 
Okay, so you can look that up for yourself. Um, the thing is, is that we didn't know since we were children that we were being brought in, that there's more than one jurisdiction overlaying this entire land right now. And whichever one you decide to be in. Now, we didn't get to decide. We were brought into what's known as the public, which then made us public trustees, okay, public persons within this giant private members association. Now, why do we call it what wolf? Why are you saying it's a private membership? It's the public. I get that. I need to bend your mind for a moment. Ready? Okay. The organization of all of the state ofs, state of Wisconsin, state of Florida, state of Arkansas, state of California, they all together are working together in what's known as a PMA, a private members association. How do we know this? Well, immigrants come here, they've lived in the area for a number of years, and they try to get citizen rights, and they can't get them. Why? Because they're not U.S. citizens, because the membership to be a public person is in fact private for either an American or a U.S. citizen. And those are actually two separate things legally. So the states can't bring in an immigrant directly because they gave up that ability to uh, naturalize years ago to the government. The government takes care of all that now. To be a U.S. citizen is to walk like one, talk like one, act like one, accept the identifiers of one, but legally, a U.S. citizen is somebody who operates and lives in Washington, D.C. So if you're outside of D.C., but wait a minute, I thought U.S. citizen meant everybody. U.S. citizen is a specific class of person. You were born as a state citizen and a national loyal to the republic or private side of your state. When you were a baby, the hospital brought you into being a U.S. citizen by means of the state-provided birth certificate, and then they had you do something called what? Prove residency. To prove residency means to be brought into the public, made official, made into a federalized state employee. How do they recognize this? Is your name in all capitalized letters, and partially, you're still partially in with your name in upper and lower case lettering. Wolf, I can't believe that. Can that be true? Oh, yes. In Black Law's dictionary, a name that has received a full loss of rights is called Capitus Demutio Maxima and is represented by your name in all capitalized letters. That's what it is. It's in their books. So this is a victory. I digress. For those people who do right to travel to understand that Congress does know what it is. They are very aware. There are many thousands upon thousands of people out there who do right to travel. They're operating their vehicles privately. Doesn't mean that you still don't need insurance. Doesn't mean that um, you can disobey with the rules of the road and do whatever. Nope, nope, and nope. Can't. Still have to abide by it. But does it mean you can use your vehicle privately if you know how to do it right? You know how to remove yourself from the system. You know how to put together your affidavits and your information. So yeah, the Supreme Court supports all that, but you still have to do things right. You still have to get rid of your contracts. Now, for those people who've contacted me over the years and do CDL, sorry, you cannot do right to travel in your personal conveyance. You can do it in your work truck, but your private vehicle used just for pleasure, travel A to B from here to work, to the grocery store, to the bar and back, or however you move, that's fine. But if your vehicle is registered to the state, it is co-owned with them. You've pledged your property to that particular state. Now, for other information on right to travel, watch the rest of my videos. Go to YouTube and type in The Bad Wolf or at The Bad Wolf or James C. Lovett on YouTube as well. I'm on other platforms. If you want to check out my website. It's blacksite32.com. You can find a whole lot of good files, information, some free, some for pay, other services. Um, uh, uh, also, you can find discounts and other offers. If you need help with starting a business, you need a mobile notary, or maybe you just want to learn about your house and that there's actually a true way of owning your house in the private. 
as you know, there's a, such a thing as a land patent that you can use to challenge that your house is, in fact, your land is really yours. The government provided a land patent that should be in your hands right now. I've got mine. So for more interesting things, once again, this is not something for the diehard U.S. citizen, though if you are born here, and you now are here just for the first time, understand that you probably have a private side if you were born in any of the states. Matter of fact, if you were born in Florida, you are known as a Floridian. Did you know that's a nationality? Did you also know that you are also then considered a Native American? Because you are native to America. This is where you were born. You might have heritage and ancestry in other lands, but I, for instance, am a Native American who happens to have African ancestry. That's how it works. All right, guys, for more things that you guys want to know, I should madman the bad wolf. Woo! And I'll haunt you guys later. Later. Thanks for watching. And feel free to share the video. There's more coming.